Hello students! Welcome to Grade 10 Science Lesson. And I'm your teacher, Mom Marian Soriano. Deoxyribonucleic acid or DNA is the chemical name for the molecule that carries genetic instructions in all living things. The genes that determine who you are are made up of DNA. Your DNA gives all the instruction for all the proteins your body makes. And in return, the proteins determine the structure and function of all your cells. How are proteins produced? Let's find out in today's lesson. Lesson 7. RNA and Protein Synthesis Ribonucleic acid or RNA is a nucleic acid that is similar in structure to DNA but different in subtle ways. Structures of ribonucleic acid Unlike DNA, RNA is single-stranded. The single-stranded structure of RNA allows this molecule to fold back on itself and form various stable secondary structures as necessary. An RNA strand has a backbone made of alternating ribose sugar and phosphate groups. Attached to its sugar is one of four bases, adenine, uracil, guanine, and cytosine. Keep in mind that there is no thymine in RNA strand, so adenine will be linked to uracil, while guanine will be paired to cytosine. This linking of nitrogenous bases is very important during protein synthesis. The type of RNA dictates the function the molecule will have within the cell. Of the many types of RNA, the three most well-known and most commonly studied are messenger ribonucleic acid or mRNA, ribosomal ribonucleic acid or rRNA, which are present in all organisms, and transfer ribonucleic acid or tRNA. Let's have the first type of RNA, messenger ribonucleic acid or mRNA. mRNA is a single-stranded RNA molecule that is complementary to one of the DNA strands of a gene. The mRNA is an RNA version of the gene that leaves the cell nucleus and moves to the cytoplasm where proteins are made. Next type is ribosomal ribonucleic acid, or RNA. The primary function of rRNA is in protein synthesis. It is responsible in binding to messenger RNA and transfer RNA to ensure that the codon sequence of the mRNA is translated accurately into amino acid sequence in proteins. To achieve the function of rRNA, the rRNA has a distinct three-dimensional shape. This distinctive three-dimensional shape creates specific sites within the ribosome. We have the A site, P site, and the E site. The A site anchors an incoming tRNA charged with an amino acid, while the P site is the site for binding and growing of polypeptide. After peptide bond formation, the tRNA binds briefly to the E site before leaving the ribosome. And the last common type of RNA, transfer ribonucleic acid or tRNA, which is a type of RNA molecule that helps decode messenger RNA sequence into a protein. tRNAs function at specific sites in the ribosome during translation which is a process that synthesizes a protein from an mRNA molecule. Since you now know the different types of RNA and their functions, let's learn about protein synthesis. What is protein synthesis? Protein synthesis is the process in which cells make proteins. It occurs in two stages, transcription and translation. Let's start with the first stage of protein synthesis, transcription. During transcription, DNA is used as a template to make a molecule of messenger RNA. The molecule of mRNA then leaves the nucleus and goes to a ribosome in the cytoplasm where translation occurs. 
During transcription, a strand of mRNA is made to complement a strand of DNA. Transcription has three steps, initiation, elongation, and termination. Initiation is the beginning of transcription. It occurs when the enzyme RNA polymerase binds to a region of a gene called the promoter. This signals the DNA to unwind so the enzyme can read the bases in one of the DNA strands. The enzyme is ready to make a strand of mRNA with a complementary sequence of bases. After initiation, the next step is elongation. Elongation is the addition of nucleotides to the mRNA strand. And the last step is termination. Termination is the ending of transcription. The mRNA strand is complete and it detaches from DNA. The last stage of protein synthesis is translation. Translation is the process in which the genetic code in mRNA is read to make a protein. After mRNA leaves the nucleus, it moves to a ribosome which consists of rRNA and proteins. The ribosome reads the sequence of codons in mRNA. And molecules of tRNA bring amino acids to the ribosome in the correct sequence. To understand the role of tRNA, you need to know more about its structure. Each tRNA molecule has an anticodon for the amino acid it carries. An anticodon is complementary to the codon for an amino acid. For example, the amino acid lysine has the codon adenine, adenine, and guanine. So the anticodon is uracil, uracil, and cytosine. Therefore, lysine would be carried by a tRNA molecule with the anticodon UUC. Wherever the codon AAG appears in mRNA, a UUC anticodon of tRNA temporarily binds. While bound to mRNA, tRNA gives up its amino acid. With the help of rRNA, bonds form between the amino acids as they are brought one by one to the ribosome, creating a polypeptide chain. The chain of amino acids keeps growing until a stop codon is reached. After protein synthesis, a polypeptide chain is synthesized. It may undergo additional processing to form the finished protein. To summarize what you have learned, protein synthesis is the process in which cells make proteins. Transcription is the transfer of genetic instructions in DNA to mRNA in the nucleus. It includes three steps, initiation, elongation, and termination. Translation occurs at the ribosome, which consists of rRNA and proteins. In translation, the instructions in mRNA are read, and tRNA brings the correct sequence of amino acids to the ribosome. Then RNA helps bonds form between the amino acids, producing a polypeptide chain. After a polypeptide chain is synthesized, it may undergo additional processing to form the finished protein and deliver to the different parts of our body. I hope you learned and enjoyed our lesson. This is Mamarian Soriano. See you in the next lesson. <laughs>